and being with us as we uh, commemorate and ponder and uh, participate in remembering uh, the last few uh, days and moments of Christ's life. This Monday, Thursday, uh, we will spend time thinking and praying in the upper room, remembering the prayer in the garden, the arrest and the trial and the crucifixion. But even as we remember these incomprehensible moments, we remember that tonight that Christ is with us. Christ is present in our worship. Christ is present in our grief. Christ is present in the midst of agony. And Christ is present in our hurting. Christ is also present in our healing. And tonight we come to remember, we remember because Christ is present with us. So as we gather to worship this evening, we light this candle, being reminded of the presence of Christ in our world and the presence of Christ in this place.
we have gathered this holy Monday, Thursday evening. As Monday comes from the Latin word meaning mandatum, a mandate, command. It reminds us of the commandment that Jesus gives his followers in the upper room to follow his example in loving, caring, and having compassion to those around them. Tonight, as we walk through this service, we remember Jesus' example of servanthood and sacrifice. In the upper room, through the washing of feet, the breaking of bread. As we proceed in this evening's service, I want to give you a couple of instructions. First, during our hand-washing portion of the service, I invite you to come to the center aisle. There's two stations. There will be people at each station. Simply cup your hands and hold it over the bowl, and your hands will be symbolically washed. You can go to either side, and then return to your seat uh, through the outside, by the outside aisle. And then as we break bread together in communion, uh, you will once again be invited to come forward via the center aisle, and there will be individuals on both sides. You will take the bread and the cup, and then you will eat and drink as you feel led during those moments. As we conclude our service this evening, we will journey to the cross through a series of, uh, of scripture readings. Uh, we will Remember the journey through the tenebrae of uh, snuffing out candles and darkness will enter our presence as we remember the journey from the upper room to the cross. As we conclude our service, uh, we will simply ask that you exit in silence this evening. Uh, now let us journey together from the upper room to the cross this evening. Good evening. Would you take your hymn, hymnal now and turn to hymn number 307 and stand with me as we sing Just As I Am. And we're going to sing verses 1, then we will skip down to 4 and then sing 4, 5, and 6. So 1, 4, 5, and 6 of Him Just As I Am.
good evening. Please pray with me. Gracious God, how precious is your love for us that we might have salvation through your son, Jesus. Forgive us when we have sinned against you in thought, word, deed, by things done and things not done. We are grateful for the example Christ gave us as he lived here on earth, a life where he displayed love, compassion, forgiveness, mercy, and justice for all. A love for us so great that he walked a painful road to the cross. He shared living water, bread of life, brought salvation to the world, and died for all. Help us to remember Jesus told us the greatest commandments are to love, are to love God with all our hearts and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Let us display this in our daily lives as we worship in the love and care for those around us and beyond. As we focus on our service tonight, in the, on the hours before Christ's death, help us to remember the eternal life that his suffering and death and resurrection brought us. Let us see through his resurrection. He has shown us that death is not the end. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, we follow in the steps of the disciples and Jesus by participating in the hand-washing service. In the upper room, Jesus gathered with his disciples, his followers, his friends, offered them a simple yet profound act of service. He washed their feet. We may be thinking in these moments that we are like Peter and we want to refuse such an act. Oh, Jesus, why, why would you do such a thing? Tonight we may think, well, no, no, we, we don't need such a thing. Maybe I should be the one who washes others. Maybe I should humble myself in that, but I should not receive such an act. Or maybe this evening we find ourselves uh, like Peter later was and thinking, well, that's not enough. Uh, let's do more. Wa wash all of me, Lord. In both of these moments, Jesus teaches both humility and the sufficiency of the grace of God that we must humble ourselves both in service and the receiving of such service and also be of a, the understanding that the grace of God, however little we may think it is, is sufficient for all of us. In a world that calls us to be self-sufficient or self-serving, the act of humility and value that we find in serving one another is an important thing we learn this evening. We now gather with the disciples accepting the gifts, humbly accepting the gifts of this cleansing service. You are invited to come. As you hold your hands over the bowl, you will be told in the symbolic act of washing, the Spirit of God cleanses your soul. You are forgiven and loved. Your hands will then be dried as you return before returning to your seat. I now ask that those who are helping come forward to prepare yourselves. In just a moment, you will be invited to join us as well. As you feel led, come, receive the gift.
After Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, they were gathered around the table. There, as they gathered and they feasted, they served one another. There was probably some laughter, maybe even some tears. They then were entering into a holy moment in which we call communion the Lord's Supper on that first night in which Jesus broke the bread and poured out the cup. Let us prepare ourselves now to come to the table and commune with God as we sing hymn 366, Let Us Break Bread Together.
Jesus was there with his disciples and it was in those moments he broke the bread and he reminded though that they were all one, there were many, they were one in the body of Christ, but as the bread is broken, so his body would be broken so that we might be forgiven and made whole ourselves. And as Jesus poured out the cup, he poured out the cup of the new covenant, reminding them and telling them that this new covenant was one that was radical and different from anything they had ever experienced, but it was one that would provide them salvation through the grace and mercy of God. I imagine on that evening, as they had partaken in the bread and the cup many times before, they were perplexed by these words of Jesus. For this was not the traditional Passover that Jesus was participating in this evening, but this was something different and new, yet it probably felt warm and inviting. Tonight, as we come to this table, this is something we have done many times before. It's something that we are used to. And yet, each time, as we remember the sacrifice of our Savior and how his body was given for us and how his blood was shed for the forgiveness of our sins, there is something yet warm and inviting to remember the salvation and the grace that comes through such an act. So we are all welcome at this table, welcome to receive the grace and the forgiveness and the mercy and the love of God. Let us pray. Almighty God, for this your bread and this your cup, we give you thanks. For you were broken for us, your blood shed for us, so that we might be free and whole, complete. So Lord, help us to celebrate this evening through remembering through the warm comfort of the grace and the mercy of our Savior, how you continue to grant those gifts to us. In Jesus' name, amen. as you feel led.
quickly from the upper room, Jesus then found himself in the garden. Tension in the air. The mood changes. The people all around him questioning what was going to happen next. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. And when he came back again, found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. And returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, 
The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered unto the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Would you please take your hymnal and turn to hymn number 150? Um, and I will actually ask you guys to remain seated at this time as we sing, Go to Darkest Enemy, just the first two stanzas. Temptation comes, and yet we give in. Therefore, darkness falls on us. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords, clubs, sent from the chief priest, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss, the man, arrest him and lead him away on the guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, rabbi and kissed him the men seized jesus arrested him then one of them standing near with his sword drew it and struck the servant of the high priest cutting off his ears am i leading in a rebellion said jesus that you have to come with swords and clubs to capture me every day i was with you teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me, but the scripture must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. We fight with weapons and anger, therefore darkness falls on us. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and there he sat with the guards and warmed himself by the fire. The chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin looked, were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they didn't find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. And then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. 
we heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands and in three days will build another not made with hands. And yet even then their testimony did not agree. And then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Messiah, the son of the blessed one? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the cloud of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fist and said, prophecy, and the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, this fellow is one of them, and again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know what this man you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed the second time, and then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. you again take your hymnal and turn to hymn number 137 and you can remain seated again as we sing the first and third stanza of O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Follow Jesus at a distance, unsure if his promises are true. Therefore, darkness falls on us.
Very early in the morning, the chief priest, with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin, made their plans. So they pound, bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accuse him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they have, are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man named Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionist who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release you, release to you the king of the Jews? Asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have Pilate released Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, said Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Appeasing others. We forsake Christ. Therefore, darkness falls on us. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews, again and again. They struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put back on his clothes, and they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priest and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped in insults on him.
we mock and crucify the Christ. Therefore, darkness falls on us. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloia, Eloia, lama sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud voice, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger, and Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Forsaking Christ, his death comes. Therefore, darkness falls on us. It was preparation day, that is the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the soterion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph bought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. And then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid.
Jesus is dead. His body laid in a grave. The stone seals the entrance and darkness falls on us. my Lord. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Tremble, tremble. 